Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another great episode of Real Life Matters. Of course, I am your host, D Boss, and I'm just hoping that everybody's been doing their 15 minutes or more or laughing. And, um, you know, because that's good for your body, good for your soul, good for your mind. It releases a lot of endomorphins in your body. So if you have um, high blood pressure, anything like that, that'll, that'll take that out and away and also will help you. Also, it makes you feel better. It heals your body. Um, it, it keeps your abs toned. And all, you know, there's so many health benefits to it. It warms up your voice for speaking engagements. It helps you do so many things. So people say to me, oh, I don't have anybody to laugh with. Yes, you do. You can call somebody. You could watch something. You know, they got so many people. Do, there's so many funny things you could watch. You could just sit in a group and you could laugh or, you know, or just do something with your children and laugh. Well, how you start your day is how you're going to uh, finish it and how everybody's going to receive you. So we're going to hear something from our sponsors. We got a, a filmmaker here. I like these ones when they come up and uh, we'll be right back and we're going to find out everything about his journey and how he started and how he, he you know, how everything's going with him. So we're going to be right back after after from vital steps to vital health. Welcome to your Vital Steps to Better Health and Fitness. I'm Joanne James. Today we're talking about how exercise affects stress. Everybody has stress in some way in their lives, but regular exercise is a powerful tool for managing your stress level. A couple of things that it does. One is it releases endorphins, which is a feel-good hormone into your system that gives you more energy, makes you feel good, and reduces your anxiety and probably eliminates your depression. Also, exercise is a distraction. It keeps you thinking about other things other than your problems that you're having. So exercise whenever you're feeling stressed, that will distract you. Exercise also improves your sleep quality by regulating your sleep pattern, which is increasing your resilience to stress. So get a good night's sleep and you'll get that after you exercise. So make sure you incorporate exercise into your daily lifestyle and that way you'll get a lot less stress in your life. I'm Joanne James, and this has been your Vital Steps to Better Health and Fitness. See you next time. Thank you, Joanne James, for that tip. That You could do that along with your laughing, that because the exercising releases your endomorphins in your body. That's very important, people. People don't think so, but it's very important because that what causes a lot of stuff with people. So, you know, exercising, laughing, doing all those things helps. All right. Well, we're going to get right into it today. We got um, a filmmaker and um, he's going to he's going to be talking about one of his films that that he's um, that he's just um, did who we were, who we became. And um, we're going to find out all about it and all the you know challenges and when he had to make it, make the film and all that. So with no further ado, I introduce to you Darshan Gajar. Hello. Hi. Thanks for I'm having me. I'm telling you. <laughs> Glad to have you here today. Thank you. All right. So here at Real Life Matters, we like to know where everybody's cultural background and where they come from. Yes. Yeah, so I'm a South Asian uh, Indian born in the UK and raised here. So I grew up here and um, I guess I make a lot of films about racism and race and representing a lot of different backgrounds. Wow. Well, you picked a, 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 a hard topic, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I did. laughs> and, a, and a controversial one. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So I guess you get, you get a lot of flashbacks from it. And uh, I guess people have their own point of views, right? Yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of that. But luckily, we didn't get much from it because the way we went around with this one was a bit more of a peaceful approach and trying to show um, that these people were, they had their own stories and they were okay. people themselves. Um, I don't know if you want me to expand a bit on that. Or... Well, you could expand it in a minute, but yeah. what made you want to get involved in filmmaking? What did you want? Why did you want to pick that career path? 
Yeah, so growing up, I, I did a lot of animation in my bedroom and like I used to play a lot of games like Minecraft and stuff and I used to animate the characters and make videos online. Um, and then when I went to college, there wasn't an animation degree, it was a film degree with animation. So I did that and then I realized I actually enjoy being outside rather than stuck behind the computer all day animating. Um, so I, I picked up a camera and remember that when I was younger, I always made films as well on my iPod. Um, and that, that just kind of rem reminded me that I actually really like film and I feel like I have a good eye for it from what I've created in the past few years as well. So I kind of so you went to school, you went to school for it or yes. Yeah. So I went to uh, college and university for film. So any challenges when you were taking it or that you overcame? Um, yeah, it's quite a few challenges. I mean, a lot of them is what I found with film school is it's kind of a thing where not a lot of people that go to film school tend to want to be there doing film. It's kind of weird. It's, it's oh. like, it's, it's, it's odd. And I think it might be different abroad, but in the UK film, there's, so there's film school and then there's university. I went to university um, okay. and, did, and did a course for film. Um, film schools tend to be more focused around like people who actually want to do film, but they're a lot more expensive. And films, okay. film in university is like along many other degrees you can do at university. And what I find with university degrees within film is a lot of people go there as um, kind of just to get a degree, but not actually do film later. Okay. Um, so you find a lot of people on the course that aren't as wanting to do film as much as other people. Um, oh. So one of the challenges was the collaboration aspect. And I found that not many people were motivated as much as like some other people and like myself. So I think that was one of my main challenges at university was trying to find that right team to work with. <laughs> but, <laughs> I guess, but, well, if somebody's just working there because their father paid for the course and they're here, you know what? I really don't want to do this, Darshan. Okay, well, I don't think you could be on the team. <laughs> exactly. That's basically it. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, it's it's a waste of time, you know, and it and mm. wastes other people's times who people that have passion to do that, you know, so you just have to say to yourself, wow. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 tricky because, like, I couldn't afford to go to the proper film schools, but and I, really, I just had the ambition for it. But I managed to now that I'm after my university, I'm, I'm doing everything I want to do now. So it's fine. But <laughs> they, those were the challenges, I guess. Wow. Okay, so for you, so how many films have you done? Oh, I've done loads. Um, <laughs> I I can't even think. I've done I've done many films. Um, it depends where you want to start as counting them as films, because during university there were a lot of like experimental projects and films I did, but I wouldn't really show them to anyone now, kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> So, no, you can't watch that. Yeah, you can't watch that. So I've done loads of films. Even since I was a kid, I've done loads of films. So it's that point where you want to say, when do they start becoming films? Uh, okay. But even then, like 10 years later, I might say the same thing about the work I'm doing now. So it's like, it's all it's, it's all a timeline that shifts. But yeah, I've done okay. so many films, like probably around nearly 100 of just okay. even small and long. Yeah projects so are so so uh, do you do shorts or are you into longs or shorts or are you do yeah. combination so i normally work as a dop so i'm normally the person who leading the camera team and the visuals and but with this project we're talking about i directed it as well um so i i, I bounce between directing and filming it myself or just doing both um but with a lot of my projects are short form so around 10 minutes um, but I am hoping to do longer form and I am currently working on my first feature documentary, which is an hour okay. 30, um, about discrimination, uh, involving the Gurkha soldiers from Nepal. So that's something I'm tr trying to do, but it will take probably over two years to make that. So, <laughs> all right. So do you act in your films too, or no, no, I don't act at all. No. Okay, because some people do acting, direct, they do yeah. everything in it. And I guess it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. I can imagine, like, especially because I'm the one filming, 
Um, I can find it tricky to film myself. Um, I thought about doing like an online YouTube kind of journal sort of thing, involving myself behind the camera uh, or in front of a camera, but it's it's hard <laughs> trying to film yourself, especially when you have such a specific taste like me as someone who's filmed films. I'd I'd want to make sure everything's really perfect and which can take a lot of effort just to set up a camera and film yourself. But wow, <laughs> I know. Yeah. All right, so uh, so where do you see yourself maybe in the next five years? Hopefully, in the next five years. I would have created my first yeah feature documentary um and i'll be working on longer form things that just help people that are being discriminated or can't really share their stories because of barriers like education culture or race or even like age like things things that like speak to me so that's kind of the thing i want to share okay well that's a good goal all right so tell us about this uh the, this one that you have, who we were and, and who we who we became. So tell us a bit about that. And we also have the trailer. Amazing. So the way this project came about is Danae, the poet, she approached me and asked, let's make a film, basically. She got funding and stuff for it. Um, it was part of Off the Shelf Festival in Sheffield. So it was kind of a project that was commissioned to be made sort of thing. Um, and the goal of it was, so a lot of Windrush films tend to be around the con the contra controversy and all about like the bad parts, um, which obviously, yes, Windrush was pretty bad, but we wanted to remind people like these people are much more than just a Windrush story. They have their own stories from home. They have their own like personalities. They have much more to tell than just the pain and suffering. So we wanted to show that via a poem and some abstract visuals and actually interviewing some of the elders and bring a bit of a light heart mood being like, oh, this is what they remember from being back abroad or, you know, little things and making it really colorful and textural and reminding them that they're fierce and strong together as a community and kind of really capturing that essence of, of what that community was. And when we screened it, I felt like we really achieved that because everyone was just like so gassed the whole community was there and they were just so happy <laughs> about what we managed to create and kind of reminded ourselves of how it's so important to tell a story that isn't always wrote by someone that isn't like a white person in this case, like okay. kind of telling the story from your point of view is so important. Okay. Yeah, because sometimes maybe they, they get enough information or research, but then they really don't know Mm. Just only going by what the research is. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, but when you have hands on and it's you, then it, you can portray it a lot better. Exactly. Yeah. And it comes from your hands because, you know, there's so everybody's now is finding out so many different things about their background, which we weren't told, you know, when we were, you know, when we were younger and stuff. And now, I guess your 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 mother and father and your uncle's generation are getting old. Now they're coming out and saying things. It's like, well, well, well why don't you tell us that yeah. like twenty something years ago? <laughs> yeah. But I guess they just wanted us to live the way we live, you know. Yeah, I feel there. I I feel that a lot. Like growing up as an Indian in the UK, like I, I've I've worked on a short film about my experiences growing up, and it was very like racist and a lot of the things that I thought, like, I feel like I couldn't talk to that, talk about the feelings I was experiencing with my parents because they never spoke about racism and stuff. Yeah. And like, and it's only coming out nowadays. Like once they know I'm making these films about this and they're like, oh yeah, this all happened. It's like, and it's, I'm starting <laughs> to put the puzzle together, like, and realize. So that's why my mom was left that job because of something. And that's why, like, there's a lot of things that I'm putting together and, Makes or, sense or she wasn't anymore. working there anymore because she said something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. because it's very, it's very, very difficult. You know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, until after. And I guess maybe in your parents and their minds are saying, you know what, I don't, I let let my kids grow up a certain mm. way, and then after they can just, uh, you know, they don't have to go through all that. 
but yeah. then they don't realize that we do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's different things, and you don't know when somebody's saying something, and you're saying, "Hey, what do you mean?" Yeah, or, exactly. or you have a different dialect or an accent, and oh, we sound a little different, you know. Mm. Then they start talking louder because maybe they think because by talking louder to you, they figure that that's going to help you. But it's it's not about that. You're human. We we bleed the same and everything else. So we all have the same health conditions. So exactly. <laughs> right. All right. So we're going to watch a little bit of this. Who we were. And who we became, and we'll be right back. Our lives are so much richer and more expansive than the issues that push against us. We have always been here, in this place where institutions and gatekeepers have tried to erase us. And if we don't see ourselves in the picture, weaved into the landscape, how will our children even know that we were here? And if we don't tell our stories and share our histories, how will we know what we're capable of? Wow, that was short and sweet. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So where can people see this or when is it coming out or has it been released? So I found out the other day it's actually online on YouTube. Um, oh. So you can search it up. I think it's been posted by the University of Sheffield uh, YouTube okay. channel or something. Um, or it's also on my website. Um, but it is also making its way around festivals currently. Okay. And I think it's going to can't remember the exact name, but somewhere in Canada, <laughs> um, well, the festival, Toronto. Um, Toronto International Film Festival? I think. Or no, Caribbean I think Tales? I think, it's, I think it's Caribbean. Um, Caribbean Tales. Yeah, I think it's that With one. With Francis that's and into. Solomon. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Danae, the poet, is actually flying out to be there. So that's cool <laughs> as well. So are you going or no? I'm not, no. Probably <laughs> not. <laughs> You would have time. a good time. <laughs> yeah. You got to have some family over here. You got to figure out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got to be able to book everyone in and have that holiday as well. Yes. And then you can see all your family and just, you know, but then, well, you'll get here soon enough. One day. Yeah. All right. So what's up next for you now? What are you working on? So as I mentioned earlier, I'm working on my future documentary about the Gurkhas. Um, so for those that don't know, the Gurkhas are Nepali soldiers recruited. Uh, well, they're part of the British Army now, but originally they weren't. There's there's some story on how that happened, but they basically went to war and the British couldn't beat them, but thought they were really good. So they joined forces, well, hired them. And then now those same Gurkhas who have fought battles for the British, who are living in the UK, are not getting good equal pension. So they're really old veterans, but they're being paid like pennies and unable to like just live off what they're being paid despite being like majors in the army and stuff. And in comparison to the British counterparts, the British are earning way more and they're living a great life kind of thing. So that's what I'm trying to trying to go into and talk about um, for my future doc. But then I'm also just finishing up on my short film, Ravi, which is about me growing up in the UK. It's five minutes long, just under. And it talks about the experiences of being if not the only brown kid in the school. <laughs> um, so that's me being grown up in Grantham, a small white town, very white town, um, and not very diverse at all. So yeah, it kind of, it, it talks more about how I resented my culture growing up as a kid, but then realized later on, it's not me that's the problem, it's them. So okay. yeah. So I but did to... you have any, did you have any problems like you didn't did you want to marry or does your family want you to marry um, into their own culture and stuff because I know a lot of people they have no, that my issue. yeah so a lot of cultures do have that my family are luckily like very they're very open to things so okay I'm lucky with that like I think one of the things is like for me to even be a filmmaker in the first place a lot of South Asian background families would be like, no, <laughs> you, you you should be a lawyer, doctor or something like you should be an academic rather than a, an artist. But 
my sister's doing that anyway, so it's like <laughs> she's, she's like she's already got the lawyer bit bit. So it's and like she took the torch. She took the torch from it. Yeah, she was, she's the older she's the older sibling, so she's already gone and done that. So now okay. I can I can live a happier life. <laughs> but yeah, all right, yeah, she's enjoying it. <laughs> all right, well, um, Daisha, um, are there any shout outs that you want to give to your people? I think I just want to shout out the crew and Danae as well for getting me on this project and like everyone that's helped make this project because it's such an important story for the Windrush generation, especially those that we interviewed are like, you know, they're coming to an age where eventually they're all going to be gone. And it's kind of that thing of where we need to make sure we write our legacies before those who wrote our legacies for us, you know, we can't let them do that kind of thing. So we need to write our legacies for ourselves and make sure our children know how we were here in the first place. Okay. Well, I, I wish you all the best, you know, in your mm -hmm. journey and your ploy, you know, and in your documentary, you know, writing your doc is probably going to take some time. Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but you know what, it's all worth it at the end. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So if people want to look at, look at you or, you know, find you up and look, you know, follow you and see what's going on, where can they um, uh, find you? Yeah. So I'm mostly active on Instagram. My Instagram handle is just my name here, here, here. <laughs> just with okay. the ass, ass symbol in front of it. Yeah. So, or you can just search it up on the internet and you'll find me somewhere. And then you could look for the film on. Um... Yes. If you type who we were, who we became on YouTube and my name it should come up okay well we appreciate that you know and you're gonna come back when you write your documentary you know we can't wait for that and also you know you know please, people go view it comment like share so you could see it you know you know and, and make the because like you know they're looking for those comments and stuff and they and they'll respond back to you be very surprised today people will do that so again, I want to thank you, um, Deshaun uh, Gujar, for coming on today and telling us about the journey, telling us about your journey and your experience with, you know, with, you know, being a visual minority and uh, what happens and, you know, what happens to people. You don't want to get, you know, shadowed in the background, right? Mm, yes, exactly. Thank you for having me. Oh, that's not a problem. So I do want to thank everybody for tuning in with me to me tonight. So good night and bye for now. Thank you. Bye.